obviously start a Big Ten play. Um, I was really, really pleased with the, the FDU game. Uh, it's not an easy game to prepare. Um, the way they play, their style is so unique uh, with all the run and jump, what they do in the, in the half court. Um, it, and uh, it's a game where you don't run a lot. Uh, you get in trouble if you try to run a lot um, in terms of execution of half court offense. So we made plays and it led to you know, 21 assists. It led to uh, multiple guys with double doubles. It led to multiple guys uh, in, in terms of us shooting the basketball at a, at, a, at a high clip and get some guys going. Very, very proud of Justin. Uh, the hard work he's put in really since the break is, is was great to see that rewarded. Uh, and then I thought Dane was spectacular uh, coming off the bench. Uh, and then our, our rebounding effort, uh, it's got to continue now as we get into Big Ten play, but that was that was something positive to see. Uh, obviously, uh, now it's 19 Big Ten games. It starts with uh, Northwestern uh, coming in here, and, and, and obviously that's a very good Northwestern team. Uh, in most cases, probably the best guard in our league uh, in Boo Booey. Uh, and uh, uh, they've already beaten the number one team in the country. So uh, very, very good basketball team. Uh, extremely well coached. Uh, they've got they've got a lot of really key pieces back off last year's team, and uh, you know it'll be uh, uh, be a typical Big Ten game and Illinois versus Northwestern, and, and uh, tremendous respect for, for for Chris and 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 their team and how good they are. What are some things you, you can do to keep Boo Booey off balance a, a little bit? <laughs> yeah. Well, I won't tell you that. Uh, <laughs> But it, but it is about keeping him off balance. And I, you know, I thought that uh, uh, I think he had uh, 28 with about 14 to go last year, uh, something like that. Maybe it was more than that. Uh, it seemed like every time he touched it, he scored. Uh, you got to, you, you can't leave him alone. He's got maybe the best float game in college basketball in terms of floaters from from 15 feet. Uh, you know, but you've got to make it hard. Um, and uh, you know you can't leave. Uh, you know can't give a lot of help. You know he's got elite shooters and Ty Berry and and uh, you know the transfer has been, in my opinion, uh, Langmore is 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 probably might be the best shooter in college basketball. I mean if he's got a clean look, he does not miss. And uh, you know and then they got a legit lob threat. Uh, you know with big big fellow rolling down the down the lane, so uh, makes guarding him uh, very challenging. Since Nico is doing some basketball activities, is there any more clarity on his timeline? We don't have. Uh, we, we hope to have a little more early next week. Uh, it's it's it's. This is just part of his his process of, of return. Uh, but until the scans come back, we'll re-image those things. Until those come back, we get a little better idea. Uh, you know, this is uh, uh, one of the first days that he's actually been on the court in a basketball shoe shooting a basketball so we're headed in the right direction but uh, uh, you know, I don't want to jinx anything because I don't have a timeline. How would you see your team respond in practice or in games since Terrence's absence and how important are these times Brad, as you try and figure out what your new normal is? Well like I said you know the other day I mean we're, we're a connected basketball team and you know it's it's a it's a group that I'm excited to coach every single day because they, they're very matter of fact uh, they've got the next game up mentality Tuesday nights Big Ten play. Uh, we've kept it that simple, um, you know, all year long. It, we haven't varied from from what our uh, what our standards are, and this team's standards are to be the best they can be every day. And and uh, you know that's that's been very much appreciated on my end from day one, and 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 it'll be that way today as we prepare for Northwestern on Tuesday. Quincy said that he felt that connection, you know, when he got here. So in the summer, like, what? Was it at that time where maybe you didn't have to, maybe you still had to build it, yeah. but you had a foundation in June? This is going to sound corny, and I, and I don't know any other way to put it. Really, really, really high character guys. And and those guys are, I mean, they, they all have a common goal of winning. There's there's a maturity about these, these transfers. Um, and... Uh, that their focus has been on winning, 
and it's not about the individual team stuff. It's been about their teammate. Uh, you know, we, we talk about that a lot, the locker room. And, uh, you know, when you, when you remove the round ball, you know, the round ball makes a lot of friends. The basketball does. You know, we call each other friends. But when you remove that, these guys are truly friends. These are, these are relationships. They know their parents' names. They know their brothers and sisters. That's unique. And, and you know, now Quincy has a, has, has a child. And, and to see these guys respond that way, we do this Secret Santa thing at, at Christmas. And to see the thoughtfulness that these guys had in, 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 in their gift giving. Um, is is tremendous because they actually know, and so um, I felt that that way for a long, long time. Um, I think the Spain trip was was a driving force in, in helping um, solidify that because uh, it wasn't just basketball over there. It was a lot of a lot of hanging out and and doing fun stuff. So um, you know, money well spent on the Spain trip, but uh, I think it speaks volumes to the character of these guys. In your mind, what made Justin Gibbs have an expression to you, and how has he adapted to his new role? Yeah, I, th I don't think it's, I don't want to say it's been easy for him. It, it hasn't, and, and I, it's really hard being a transfer and you only have one year. And to jump into this thing and, and know that you could be in a different role, you don't know what your role will be. Um, unbelievable kid I mean unbelievable person and all he's done is try to try to do what we've asked and you go from a prominent scorer to a guy that we're asking you to be an impact off the bench and not know what your minutes are you know in the FAU game it was it was it was a lot and then in the in, in other games it hasn't been as much um, learn different terminology a different system a different way of playing to jump the level he jumped. And now to see all of the work he's done, and really since, you know, for the last couple of weeks, to see that pay off with a game like that where you make open shots. And, you know, it's like I told him, I said, when we, when we recruited you, that's the way we thought you'd play every night. And and I don't mean that in a bad way, but, but he's a really good player. And it's just things starting to click. And that's, that's something that was, he's worked so hard. And um, I've got a lot of respect for that. You know, Terrence, he initiated a lot of offense. How do you approach now trying to figure out what that looks like without him? I mean, balls in Marcus and Ty's hands a lot anyway. We're, you know, the stuff we're doing has been really based on matchups. We have, um, uh, we have the ability to create a lot of matchup problems. Um, truthfully, it starts with, with, with Coleman, how teams match him. Um, I, I truly think the guy you visited with earlier, Quincy's turning into a, an all-league type guy. Uh, he's a guy that, again, we can take advantage of, of mismatches. But, uh, um, you know, it's, it's, it's everything we're doing is matchup-based, much more so than it is um, trying to run set A or set B. Um, and, and it's just taking advantage of that. And I think we've got a lot of very talented players, and we'll keep uh, we'll keep looking for those opportunities wherever they come. Draven got some playing time against FDU. Were you pleased with what you saw from him? I was very. Um, Draven works as hard as anybody in this program, and he overthinks things sometimes, which is a really good thing and very typical for a freshman because he wants to be perfect. And and it's it's it's. It's challenging him to do what he does every single day in practice because we can't guard. I mean, we have a hard time guarding him. And uh, uh, he's got the ability. He, he, he had a fadeaway off a, off a post up that most people, not named Kobe Bryant, can make. I mean, he's, he was a, he's, a, he's just that guy. He's, he's, a, he's a gifted hard shot maker. But uh, yeah, I was very pleased with him and excited what the future holds for him. With Quincy, I mean, how do you feel like maybe you've managed to get you know, the best of both worlds of you know Syracuse and Oregon, Quincy, to kind of merge this year? Yeah, I, I mean, one, he works, and he he's he's as hard a worker every single day in practice as as, as we've had here. I mean, he he goes every day. He takes every play as serious as there is. Um, 
And I think it was, you know, kind of re-sparking maybe the the rebounding bug in him, and and he's we're playing him a little more uh, matchup wise, where he's not guarding perimeter players quite as much. And we do some switching, obviously, but um, uh, he's really bought into the defensive side. I think that's his way to the next level. He's a he's a guy who can guard multiple positions, um, but he's just got a gift on the offensive glass. Uh, the three-point shooting we knew would come. You know, that was just more risk than anything. So I think it's just been uh, a natural, easy kind of flow into things for him. And, and once he got through the, the initial risk problems, you know, we're starting to see a really, good, a really, really good uh, forward. What have you seen from Sincere in practice and how the redshirt process overall is just going through? Great. I've, I've loved sincere Harris in this process. Uh, his dedication with Fletch, uh, he heads our scout team every day. He's a guy that is um, uh, learning how to eat, uh, learning how to pack on calories, uh, learning on learning, you know, he's, he's getting extra workouts daily with Fletch. Uh, and that's what this process is, is, is about for him. And that and he's out here every single day with Chester, uh, getting his own, you know, personal workout, making some changes and some things, working on some things. And uh, to this point, he's been uh, off the chart in terms of taking advantage of, of the redshirt opportunity. Has anything changed in that process with Terrence out or with Nico out or anyone else, or is he still oh, no. ready for that? No, process? no, he's he's. We're all in on that process, getting him better. Ter Terrence. Uh, uh, well, their possessions are still pretty low. They're an elite defensive transition team. Uh, they're a team that doesn't give you a bunch there. They've, they've been very, very good on the defensive glass, as Chris's teams always are. Um, but yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll take opportunities when they're there. They're a, they're a really, really good three-point shooting team if you give them uh, those opportunities and uh, uh, you know they're a team that uh, uh, doesn't make a lot of mistakes I think they may still be leading the country in fewest turnovers or they're right there close to it um, you know so they don't beat themselves and uh, uh, but yeah this this team is you know they're they go as boo goes uh, but but they've also got some veterans on, around the around him on the perimeter that are that are dead, dead eyes and 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 uh, uh, that allows them to score some points. Good time for two more. T Terrence had the ball a lot at the end of the shot clock and end of game situations. Are are there guys that you feel comfortable putting in that situation now uh, that he's not here? Yeah, yeah. I think Ty's earned that right. I think that uh, Marcus has earned that right. <laughs> I think Quincy's earned that right. Uh, I think all of those guys are very very capable. Uh, I think there's actions we run to Luke um, as well. Um, you know, we create opportunities for Coleman uh, in those situations, uh, especially in pick and pop situations. But uh, we've got a plethora of guys that I feel really comfortable with, really good in those spots. As you this is the last one. get into conference play, is there a difference now, maybe how you prepare a team? Because you know, on both sides, it's maybe not. You know, there's more new on both sides maybe than there was like when you were at SFA, for example. Yeah, but I think there's 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 a lot of similarities in styles. Coaches don't change a lot. I think, you know, I think one of the things I like about our group is I think some teams have do have to try to figure out how, how they want to guard us, what they want to do with, you know, Coleman. You know, I think Coleman's the best pick and pop five in college basketball. And, you know, how do you, how do you want to guard him? Uh, you know, what, what do you want to do with a point guard who gets 15 rebounds? Uh, you know, our pace. I think there's there's things that we can cause uh, other teams to have to adjust to. But, uh, you know, we know what teams like to do. You know, we pretty much have the play cards, and there's different things that happen. And uh, the course of the game, you got to make adjustments. But, uh, you know, there's still a few guys that are always keys, and in this case it's Boo and, and – uh, you know, he's he's um, had a lot of success against us last year. we got to do a good job against him this year.